Pastor Nancy writes. On Ash Wednesday, we began a series on lament. That first message was lament and repentance. The first Sunday in Lent was focusing on why lament. Last Sunday, Pastor Andy preached on lament and honesty. Today is the third Sunday in that series. Our focus is on lament and surrender. The greatest prayer of lament and surrender of all time is the one Jesus made in the Garden of Gethsemane. The scripture we just heard is most likely very familiar to you. Jesus was pouring his heart out to God. He didn't want to go through all the events leading up to his crucifixion or the crucifixion himself. Who would? But Jesus fully surrendered himself to God. He pleaded, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine. He willingly gave his life for each one of us. He didn't want to do it. No one would want to endure that kind of suffering. But Jesus fully surrendered his life to fulfill his Father's will. Jesus was perfectly perfect and innocent. He did not cause the situation he was about to face. He was in great anguish over his approaching physical pain, separation from the Father, and death for the sins of the world. The divine course was set, but he, in his human nature, still struggled. Because of the anguish Jesus experienced, he can relate to our suffering. Jesus' strength to obey came from his relationship with God the Father, who is also the source of our strength. Jesus was not rebelling against his Father's will when he asked that the cup of suffering and separation be taken away. In fact, he reaffirmed his desire to do God's will. His prayer reveals to us his terrible suffering. His agony was worse than death because he paid for all sin by being separated from God. The sinless Son of God took our sins upon himself to save us from suffering and separation. You can understand his suffering and anguish prayer of lament. Reverend Dennis Lyle wrote about Jesus' spiritual agony. Jesus cries to allow the cup to pass from him if possible. What was the cup that Christ spoke of here? Our Lord looked deeply into the cup of human sin and groaned as he smelled its foul odor and viewed the rising poisonous fumes. This cup was full of sin. This cup was full of wrath. Christ drank a cup of wrath without mercy so that we might drink a cup of mercy without wrath. Christ drank a cup of suffering that we might drink a cup of salvation. In times of suffering, people sometimes wish they knew the future or they wish they could understand the reason for their anguish. Jesus knew what lay ahead of him, and he knew the reason. Even so, his struggle was intense, more wrenching than any struggle we will ever have to face. Paul Louis Charles Claudel, a 20th century French Catholic poet and diplomat, wrote, Jesus did not come to explain away suffering or remove it, he came to fill it with his presence. How comforting it would be if we would remember that Jesus is in the midst of our suffering. Listen to that again. Jesus did not come to explain away suffering or remove it. He came to fill it with his presence. Dr. Ed Dobson wrote, in the greatest events of all life, at the crisis moments of life, the most appropriate thing we can do is what? Say it. Right. Pray. In this prayer of Jesus, 
we begin to discover the heart of all prayer. Jesus displayed this concept beautifully in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said, not as I will, but as you will. In our darkest hour, in our deepest prayer of lament, we must learn to submit ourselves fully to the Lord's will. Every choice we make in life should be steeped in prayer. The nearer Christ came to the cross, the more he felt the need for prayer. He prayed for himself, for God's will to be done, and for the salvation of humankind. We can never face the pressures of life and the temptations it holds apart from a daily pattern of compassionate prayer. Jesus did not want to do what he knew he had to do, and he prayed earnestly. In his lament, he reluctantly but willingly surrendered to God. Surrendering is always a choice. When we cling to the way things are, it prevents us from moving forward. When we finally do surrender, there is something freeing about it. We know that we know that we know we have made the right choice. And that is when we knew it was God's will for us. You have most likely heard the saying, let go and let God. That's surrender. As disciples, we are always going to be tempted by something easier, quicker, or more aligned with our own desires, etc. If you are not in the midst of a situation like this right now, perhaps you could help someone else who is struggling with surrender. In the garden, Jesus laments. He cries out to God in prayer. Even for Jesus, being able to surrender was a process. He acknowledged his grief and emotion, his fear, and requested this cup to be removed, and yet he surrenders to the will of his Father. It wasn't a quick and simple prayer. He prayed it three times. Coming to a point of surrender can take time. Lament is part of that process. Jesus lamented and ultimately surrendered to God's will. Surrendering our lives and our situations to God doesn't mean we won't face pain or sorrow. The joy doesn't always come right away. Are we ready to say, not my will, Lord, but your will? Jesus also lamented his disciples' inability to stay awake with him and support him. Sometimes when we are faced with difficulties, we do not receive the support we want. That makes things even more difficult for us. We can lament that too. It is so hard when you don't receive the su support you had hoped for. Although Jesus was upset with his disciples for failing to support him at the most difficult time of his earthly life, he also had compassion for them. It's not always easy supporting someone who is going through a trial. We need to be patient and as understanding as possible. Even if we don't agree, if it is something God is calling them to do, we need to support them. We need to stay awake with them and lament along with them. To move forward, we have to surrender. Perhaps all of us need to practice surrendering sometime throughout Lent and beyond by surrendering sometime to focus on God and let go of other things that consume our time. With surrender comes freedom, freedom to follow God fully, to become more of who God has created us to be. How can our church surrender to God's will even as we grieve and lament changes we don't like to see? I will share a personal story of surrender. I was appointed to my first year of ministry at my home church in Langhorn. I started the position July 1st, 2007. Four months later, at the end of November, 
Pastor Tom Haw asked me if I would be interested in coming to Lehman the following July. Before that happened, I was talking with someone from Langhorn and said I would be willing to go somewhere else, but I just didn't want to move. My husband had died, I didn't have any family close by, and if I left the church, the only familiar place remaining for me was my home. The person I was sharing with said, we will have to pray about that. Immediately, I knew I had to be willing to go where God wanted me to go. When I was asked to come here, I immediately thought, I don't have to move. However, it was still very scary for me. I was being asked to leave a church where I was an active member for nearly 35 years. I would be going to a church where I didn't know anyone, and I didn't even know Pastor Tom very well. Not only that, when I came in July of 2008, the average attendance was nearly 450 people on a Sunday. In the previous few years, I had a lot of changes in my life. My father died. I retired from my 29-year teaching career to care fully for my husband. My husband died. I began serving as a pastor, and I began taking seminary classes. I remember being in my office in the midst of getting it ready for the first week I was here. I stood in the middle of the room and asked God to give me some stability for a while, knowing pastors can be asked to move at any time. And here I am, <laughs> almost 16 years later. I could never have imagined that I would still be here in that very office after all these years, but I am extremely grateful to still be serving here at Lehman Memorial United Methodist Church. I surrendered my life to God and his ministry and went where he called me to go. And I have been blessed beyond measure over and over again. Surrendering to God's will was scary for Jesus too. This morning we are remembering the greatest surrender of all time. As we partake in the communion elements, we remember the breaking of Christ's body and the shedding of his blood as he gave his life for each and every one of us. Surrendering is most often difficult and challenging, but it can be the greatest sacrifice you will ever make. Following Christ wherever he leads is always the right thing. The observance of the Lord's Supper is a time for fresh dedication, self-examination, and meditation on the death of Christ. If you are ready to surrender and begin to follow his calling, simply bow your head and tell the Lord that you are ready. As others are coming forward to receive communion, you have the perfect opportunity to ask God what it is he wants you to do. You are welcome to kneel at the chancel rail to be in a time of silent prayer. You are also welcome to come forward and pray at the chancel rail while we sing, I Surrender All. Change can be difficult and challenging, but God will always bless those who follow his call. In Psalm 30, verse 5, it says, Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. If you are in the midst of fears and or tears, or know someone who is, remember to pray a prayer of lament and surrender your pleas or your sorrow to God. You may not realize it right away, but if you ask God what his will is for your life and you trust him and obey him, your ordeal may be one of your greatest blessings. Maybe not right away, but eventually. So maybe this verse will give you courage. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning.
you sing, I Surrender All, how appropriate is that for us to sing this morning? And you may follow Pastor Nancy's uh, opportunity if you would like to come forward and kneel at the chancel rail and offer your prayer. Please feel free to do that during this time or after you receive communion. However God wants to deal with you, let him deal with you this morning. And take the opportunity to do whatever surrendering you need to do. Let's stand and sing number